Because you got to help me find the shield. Just to make your shield? I know. If you help me find it, we can find it faster. Being a better man and being a better father to me means I'm making sure that I'm not emotionally crippling my sons or that I'm not recreating the relationship that I had with my dad. Hello. Yo, Jonesy. <laughs> We're gonna do a review of the book, The Will to Change, Men, Masculinity, and Love. We've finished it. And to me, masculinity is about taking care of not just yourself, but your community. Making sure that everyone around you is better simply because you're there. And that's one of the, the key things in, in Patreon is that you have to compartmentalize. One thing you really find yourself doing is that you find yourself being someone that you're not. It's like, it's basically saying, yo, you cannot be yourself. You cannot be who you are. You cannot embrace who you are. And that's like the strangle that society has put on men. Most men can remember that point in their life where they were either explicitly or implicitly told, get rid of those emotions. They're not going to help you. You know, that's not what a man does. A man pushes those away. I remember how emotionally crippling that was. You know, I'm still recovering from that, that crippling. What comes after X? Y. Okay. Well, we both come from single parent homes. We grew up in households that our parents loved us, but our parents were also a product of what they grew up with. Wait, I made a mistake. Where? M N O. Very good. I knew you could do it. As a young kid, I just remember dad yelling at me all the time. Great job. You know, I love my dad, but like he's scary. He's getting all these stars. You gotta oh run my out gosh, of space. I got three. You got three, you got three. This, so this one is for how many questions you got correct in a row. And you did awesome. Bravo, you mastered the skill. All right. A lot of the things that he felt that were issues with him and his father, I saw being played out with Cameron. I gently would say to him, you know, you need to think about how you're talking to Cameron because I see the same issues that you were upset with your father coming up. So Cameron, we've got one more set. I want you to write the number. Unconsciously, I was recreating the relationship that I had with my dad, where, you know, I was this intimidating, you know, entity in, in the house. He's a little kid. He's not going to necessarily remember all the things I'm saying, but he will remember how I make him feel. What do you notice about their faces? Sad. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe some, maybe they lost somebody and now they're sad about it. You know, sometimes in your sleep, you cry in your sleep. And then I come in and I hold you just like that to help you calm down. Do you get sad sometimes? Yeah. If I know that yeah, me too. the emotional memories are a lot stronger, then I've got to make sure that I'm actually paying attention to those things. Dad, dad, you know, you have to listen to him and all that, but I'm still... I'm in there on the floor with you guys, and I'm rolling around, and I'm playing with you. you know, I don't want them to feel like I'm this, this arm's length character in the house. How many of you have ever experienced what Kaya's little brother experienced? With my students, I had to show my own vulnerability if I was going to get them to understand what it actually looks like for a man to be vulnerable. You know, and in doing that, you know, I think they saw the strength in expression of emotion. The book, it just, it changed my whole outlook on, on life. Particularly, you know, for these young black boys, like that's one of the hardest things is to not be hard, is to not have that mask on all the time. For it was seems as like the like status quo is normal to like suppress all your emotions and just keep it all bundled up inside. It helped me say, oh, this is what I've been seeing, or this is what I've been feeling, and made me feel better, made me feel more comfortable. For me, for a long time, I felt like I couldn't cry because it made me, like, I was not weak, which is... My journey began three years ago. How much better off would I have been had I been learning this stuff for the past three decades as opposed to the past three years? That's why I feel it's important to share this information with my students. And, and that's why 
you know, it's important to me to teach it to my sons. They're less than half my age, but that means they have double the time to figure it out. A hero looks at his flaws and says, I need to fix something. I need to fix a few things so that my sons are better than I am. Not just with our boys, but then to extend yourself to his students. He felt this need to just give it to everyone else and have everyone else uplifted with him. It's nice to feel like I'm creating an emotionally safe space for my sons. Looking to the future, I would hope that my sons, that they were able to say, Dad helped me navigate those, those crazy preteen and teenage years, and I'm going through all these hormonal changes, and I'm feeling all this stuff, and you know, thank God I didn't feel like I couldn't talk to him. Thank God I, I didn't feel like I had to just press all that stuff down and quote unquote, be a man about it. You know, thank God he never said that to me because now I'm able to, I'm able to define myself for myself.